Hi, welcome to, I think my series is going to be called Love Creates Freedom. I really like that name. I also like Sacred Journeys Together because this is a journey that I feel so many of us are doing on our own and we really need to be doing this journey together and not being so isolated and segregated which is exactly what, I guess it depends on what you believe in, <clears throat> but that is exactly what the government wants, the powers that be that aren't the light want, they all want us to believe that we are isolated and segregated. So tonight I wanted to share where I believe depression, panic attacks and anxiety come from and this is really based on where it has come from for me and also based on the conversations that I've had with people about their depression and anxiety, sometimes panic attacks. So I believe that this goes all the way back to childhood and this essence of feeling completely unsafe as a kid. Usually, and it has been really, really clear that for the people that have these issues now, is that it has come from parents that had addictive issues. So whether it, they were addicted to alcohol or cigarettes or drugs or TV or exercise, anywhere where a parent was so focused on themselves that they neglected to protect their child. And this lack of safety has created this voice, which I talked about in my video yesterday, this voice which creates these negative scenarios that are as bad as possible to keep you feeling protected to save you from feeling any more hurt than you already hurt or could potentially feel from another person. So for me, I can re see really, really clearly it went all the way back to there are a few really defining moments in my life which created unsafety. One of them was when I broke my arm when I was about seven and I fell off a swing bar. I was hanging up the top and I fell down and broke my arm and my mum was not there. No one was there. The girls that were there didn't really know what they were doing. And so that was my first moment of feeling really unsafe. The second moment was when my neighbor, we were playing tag and she ran up to the top of the tree and I raced up and I went to tag her and she went tumbling down to the bottom. And that was, that was a really one of very defining moments where I felt unsafe. And I also felt so responsible that I can really see that that moment and one other moment where I accidentally, I was playing on a trampoline with a girl and I double bounced her and she dislocated her shoulder. Uh, I was only about seven or eight at the time. These moments where I felt so responsible that I actually disconnected my friendships with them because I didn't know what to do with that. And so all of these little stories of creating all of this unsafety within me and there are other moments as well. My mum was a massive alcoholic, what people call a functional alcoholic. No one really knew she was an alcoholic until after I moved out of home. And there are other scenarios with different people in the family which I do not want to go into because I do not know how they are going to react to me talking about them. So I'm not going to talk about those. However, they were really massive scenarios that left me feeling extremely unsafe. And there was one other moment which I remember. Uh, my mum was on the couch and she'd been drinking and I was in the bedroom and I was eating chicken and the chicken got stuck and I actually started to choke and I couldn't breathe. And I raced out into the lounge room and I remember I was pointing to my throat and I was trying to breathe and she laughed at me. She thought it was hilarious. And I fell on the ground and that momentum of me falling on the ground and my chest hitting the ground actually pushed the chicken out of my mouth. And that's what saved me, or it was, the angels who gave me a big shove so I'd fall on the ground and push the chicken out. So these moments, all of these little moments created all of these these feelings of 
being unsafe and then the unsafety as I got older created this control mechanism inside my brain and there was another one where I was taking drugs and I had a really bad night we had a car accident on the way to a rave and I was about 19 I think and the other girl she freaked out I supported her through her freak out and then we went and we had way too much and my brain went on the logic that the more I take the more I will forget about the car accident but that turned around its ugly head and I ended up in hospital with my dad and then at the drug clinic claiming I was an addict which I wasn't and that night created this loop in my brain which had me believing that I was dying all the time all the time I had this belief in my brain and it's carried through my entire adulthood and my panic attacks started just after that after after that and then I got addicted to sleeping pills uh, which doesn't last long because I realized what I was doing and I stopped so all of this unsafety all of these stories they all create this control pattern where you need to control something and then usually you become an addict yourself I actually turned into an addict and ended up with an eating disorder when my mum got sick and I found out she was dying I couldn't handle it and so yeah I turned into uh, it wasn't bulimic or anorexia it was a restrictive so it's called orthorexia where you focus so much on restricting that you get to the point where you're not even really eating anything and that's where my control pattern went in and I was having severe panic attacks and this is when my daughter was little I was having severe panic attacks I couldn't get in the car and drive I didn't want to leave the house um, going across the road was really hard and driving on the freeway was impossible for almost three and a half years I haven't driven on the freeway I'm starting to drive on it again now because miraculously my panic attacks have gone away because of the breathing that I'm doing and the focusing that I'm doing and also acknowledging all of these parts of me that feel so unsafe and that feel so scared and that feel like they need to control my environment just control and so for me the control comes in the eating disorder but for other people the control comes in the need to switch off and so they drink or the control comes in the need to be fit and healthy so they exercise or it's gambling or it's smoking whatever your control pattern is whatever your addiction is whatever that thing is that you use to distract yourself from the actual deep feelings that you have the deep pain the deep scared the deep fear the really really deep um i'm not even sure i know what the word for it is yet that deep sense of foreboding thank you that's what I got sense of foreboding that feeling like something is going to go wrong in every single minute of every single day and so you need to control something but as people we cannot control anybody else we tried I tried I lost lots of friends I lost two of my best friends because I went into a control pattern when my two weeks before my mum died they ended their friendship with me but over the course of mum dying and even before that I just had such a severe control pattern around people and so I projected that control onto everybody else and so yeah it it is a it is a hard journey when you have been raised by parents who have addictive issues however I will say one thing before I get off which is I sit in a place of compassion for my mum and also my dad but more my mum because this affected my mum more which was her dad so she was raised around the depression she was also raised around the war my grandpa went to war she didn't know if her dad was coming home she was raised by a mother who was also someone who participated in the war she did all sorts of really interesting things uh, for the war people and so my mum was raised in this environment of confusion and fear 
and scarcity through the depression there was a lot of scarcity not not having enough food to eat not having money to do anything and my mum they did not come from a, an affluent background they were working class people and so my mum had her own control patterns which were then amplified when she lost her son and then that was amplified even more when my dad left and then that went out of control when my dad got remarried and that's when mum really started hitting the alcohol is when my dad got remarried and so I can see how she did not have Facebook as support she did not have people on video that were explaining about anxiety and depression and panic attacks and postnatal depression and all sorts of things like that because my dad left pretty much the day I was born so my mum was left with a newborn uh, to raise all by herself and yeah it it just created this this control pattern in me and all of that say unsafety of my upbringing has created that and all of that has created the panic attacks and the anxiety and the stress and everything else. Don't you dare jump on my computer. This is one of our cats. This is little Miss Katie Daisy. There you go, I got up there. So that's kind of what I wanted to share tonight was where I believe panic attacks and anxiety and depression come from. And I'm hoping that this is helping somebody out in the internet world to start to become a little bit clearer about where their issues are coming from. Um, I think that's pretty much it for me. Thank you very much for watching. You can find this series of videos that are going to be connecting on Facebook. There's a page called Love Creates Freedom. And there is also a website called lovescreatesfreedom.com. So feel free to check either of those out. And I will be back online again tomorrow to do another video. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching.